Welcome back everyone, hope everyone's day is going just swimmingly. Today we're going to be going over a final review of Ground Floor, an investing platform into crowdfunded real estate notes. Now you might be wondering, why is my dog on my lap? Well, I guess that's a thing on YouTube now where you do your intros with your dog on your lap, but I'll let her go because she obviously is not too fond of this. And we'll get right on into this video. Let's do it. If you're wondering what ground floor is to begin with, if you haven't watched my other videos, there is a whole playlist of three videos where I bring it up on the screen. I go through the actual platform in on the web on the website and I show you how to invest, the investment wizard, everything. I do some examples going into properties, checking them out, going to the Google Maps, checking out the street view and everything. So go check out that playlist on my channel and you'll be able to see the other videos I've done on ground floor and learn all about it if you're interested in it. But in this video, I'll just be giving my personal perspective on the platform and how I think it's gone so far with the money that I have invested in it. And I'm finally going to be giving a, just a final, 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 my last video on ground floor recommendation as to whether or not you should look into ground floor yourself. If you are interested in ground floor after everything, after you watch the, the series or the playlist on my channel, whatever you want to call it, go ahead, check out the link in the pinned comment. And if when you sign up and deposit money onto the platform, you'll get a free 10 bucks to use and invest. Now this is a US investing platform. So people watching this from outside of the United States, this isn't really something you can get into. At least I don't believe you can, but Hey, check it out for yourself. Uh, but if you are interested, make sure you check out the link in the comments. If you don't use it and you just sign up anyways, you won't get the 10 bucks. So, hey, if you like free money, might as well check it out. So let's dive right on in. First up, we're going to be going into the pros. So number one, you are investing in an asset class that is backed by a physical asset. Now, maybe I used asset too many times in one sentence. My English teacher from high school would probably say that I did. But essentially, when you invest in stocks and the company goes bankrupt, you lose all your money. Or you might make some money back if you sell out early. But if a company that you are invested in stock on, that goes bankrupt, goes out of business, the last people to get paid out to get their money back are the investors. First, it goes to like debtors, and then it goes down the whole list of everything, and then it goes to you, the stockholder. So you're last in line to get paid out when shit hits the fan. With this, you're first. You are first lean on the loans that are being given to these flippers, these uh, renovation loans. You are the first to get paid if shit hits the fan. If this flipper goes out of business, you will be the first to get paid when they foreclose on the property. So. That is the first pro, is that you are investing in a physical asset that they can be foreclosed on and you can get most, if not all of your investment back. It depends on the situation. So again, investing in anything, there is risk. Pro number two is there's an average of about a 10% return on the platform itself. When you average out investing in as many loans as you can across the different, uh, risk levels, so A, B, C, D, E, and F. The average on the platform is about 10% returns. That's including all the loans that have gone into foreclosure, all the loans that have gone into workout or have been paid back late. The average return on the platform has been 10%. So that's actually a pretty good return comparable to the stock market. So when you're trying to diversify your risk across different asset classes, uh, ground floor can be a good one to add into your portfolio as a section of it, not the whole thing as a section. So 10% returns is actually pretty good. Number three is easy diversification across many notes. They have the investment wizard, or you can simply just click invest a thousand dollars across 10 notes and it will do a hundred bucks into each of them. And you hit enter and it goes and invests in all of them. That simple, very, very simple to diversify diversify across many different notes, across many different geographical areas, different states. And so it's a great way to diversify uh, pretty, pretty easy. And I actually think it's pretty, pretty nifty how you can do that. Number four is the ability to handpick 
and research which notes you want to buy into and also not just buying a overall fund that someone else puts notes into like fundrise or whatever so with this uh that ability to do your own research lowers your risk level so when you i go through some examples in the playlist on my channel but when you spend the time and you go through uh, looking at the flipper his reputation past flips he's done uh, you can look into the actual property you can pull it up on like redfin or zillow and look at what it looks like in the for sale pictures how much you think it would cost to rehab it and just do your own math it does the deal make sense if you were a flipper would how much would you spend and does it make sense to you so you can actually go and do your own research and it's not that difficult i go through it in the playlist how to do that type of research and so yes you have to be somewhat of an active investor it's not just investing in the s p 500 index fund but it is very very simple and it at least gives you that type of control number five for the pros is the investment wizard so you can simply go through click all the different things you want to sort out of all the different notes that are available on the platform and invest in the ones that you're most interested in so if you don't want to invest in a state that is a uh, judicial state or you only want to invest in states that are non-judicial if it goes to foreclosure you can sort that out you can sort out the uh, loan to value of the uh, properties you can sort out the arv of the the flips you can sort out everything you can sort out the experience of the the flippers you can just kind of go check it out for yourself it's in the playlist but the investment wizard makes it so it's very easy to sort through everything and kind of find the notes that are most interesting to you number six for uh ground floor as a pro is the facebook group and the responsiveness to feedback and suggestions on that facebook group so it's run by ground floor it's on the ground floor uh kind of like business page but it is a group of all the investors pretty much and ground floor and you can post uh, questions comments concerns uh, and suggestions of how to improve the platform and they've actually done this they've actually gone through taken some of the suggestions that have come into the facebook group and implemented them on the platform so they're a small company they are kind of a startup you could say it's about five years they've been in business and you can kind of form it to what you would like it to be and by giving your suggestions and your feedback on the facebook group it is really nifty way to kind of be a part of it so that is the last pro let's get on into the cons the negatives of ground floor and there's a few of them but we'll get through them quick and then give my final wrap up so number one is liquidity your month your, your month your your money is locked up into the investment for about six to 12 months before you'd get any principal back. So if you don't like illiquid assets where you can just sell out if you're getting in a panic or if this is your emergency fund, don't put your emergency fund into this. It's that simple. So liquidity is something you have to look at uh, before you kind of get into it at all. But anyways, let's get on to number two, market conditions. So would you want to be investing in ground floor in 2008 probably not and so market conditions can be really affect uh ground floor in the overall platform if the housing market is going crazy and everything's selling and the market's booming ground floor is great you'll get flips they'll sell quickly and you'll get paid back quick markets tanking not so great so you have to take that into account can uh so market conditions can really impact and you really don't have any control over the market conditions so it's kind of a con in my book because you have no control over it number three is foreclosures and risk there's risk in any investment out there so if you're making money somehow there's a risk to it and foreclosures is one of those risks you have no control over it if the guy who's doing the flip sucks and doesn't do a good job isn't able to sell the house doesn't want to lower his price on the house to get it sold quicker that is a risk and you have to be willing to take that risk but hey foreclosure isn't the worst thing to have to go through especially in a non-judicial state so 
take it with a grain of salt, do your own research, and invest, in, invest, invest at your own risk. Number four is bankruptcy. So this is about ground floor itself. If ground floor goes bankrupt, uh, it was structured in a way with the company and the, the notes you're investing in that if ground floor went bankrupt, all the notes would be included with the company and bankrupt with it. So you would lose all your investments. If I'm correct in how I've read it in the release on the ground floor, just this past, like maybe six months ago or a year ago, beginning of the year, time is, I don't know, I can't keep track of time anymore with everything that's going on uh, in 2020, if you're watching this in a different year, you know what I'm talking about, is that ground floor has now restructured things and how they write the notes that you invest in, that the notes stand separate from the company. And so if the company ground floor goes bankrupt, the notes don't bankrupt with it. And so your money is still protected and you still technically have a uh, lien against that property that you have the right to foreclose on. So you're kind of protected now in the event of bankruptcy and ground floor going insolvent. So that's something to check in for yourself. I believe that is how it's now structured. So number four is kind of moot, but realize that is a risk and something that you should check into yourself. Number five is control. So I've invested in a flip. I have about 800 and something dollars in a certain note on ground floor right now. And if you look at the post flip pictures on Zillow, it looks like garbage. All right. The flip looks terrible. All the pictures look terrible that they're trying to sell the house with. Uh, they did flooring in complete opposite directions. So they have laminate flooring going this way, laminate flooring going this way, and they don't even have a threshold between it. It looks ugly. There's foot, dirty foot marks all over the floor in the the realtor's pictures. Uh, there's paint, paint marks that are random in places. It looks like garbage. So you have zero control over this and there's nothing you can do. You can't be like, Hey, flipper, you suck. I want my money back. No, you have zero control. You just have to wait, see if they sell the house, see if they don't sell the house. And if it does go to floor foreclosure, that is something that you have to be ready for. So you have zero control. And this is my biggest con to me is that zero control. And when I saw that dude's flip on, on Zillow that I'm invested in, I was like flabbergasted of how bad and how little cares that guy uh, did on his flip. So control is a big thing to me and is kind of where my overall recommendation comes from. Number six for cons are or is how you are taxed on your gains. So they're technically considered interest gained on these real estate notes. So you will be taxed at a higher percentage in the United States than something like dividends or other sorts of investments or instruments that you could be getting into. So you have to consider taxes and how they will be taxed overall. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much more in taxes, but when you have a very large portfolio, and you're pulling in 10% uh, in interest gains, uh, that can make a difference. That can be a significant amount or that can be pennies. It depends on how big of your portfolio is in ground floor and how much is being taxed. So make sure you check into that and make sure you review that with a CPA or a tax professional. I am neither of those. I'm just a guy on YouTube. So make take that with a grain of salt and get professional advice on your taxes and your tax situation. Now, the overall final wrap up grand review of ground floor is, I actually really do like ground floor. And I think it's a, a unique way to add more diversity to your overall wealth management strategy. I, I'll say this right now. This is not a get rich quick investment platform. It's not uh, BitConnect, you know, it's not Bitcoin. It's not investing in crazy Nikola stocks or Neo stocks or anything like that. Okay. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a get rich slow scheme. 
you get decent returns comparable to the S&P 500 over the long term and this allows you to diversify away from just stocks. If you just have S&P 500 or you just have the Dow or whatever, that is very concentrated in one type of asset. You only have stocks. You want to be able to diversify away from that. Okay, Even people with uh, dividend portfolios, that's still all in stocks. And so by diversifying away from just stock market, that can actually help lower your risk overall. And it's a good wealth management strategy to have. This isn't also uh, completely hands off either. So it, there's no drips, there's no dividend reinvestment programs, and you have to be very uh, cognizant of when things pay out. You could just go monthly in, check what's paid out, and then reinvest it into different notes. You should also be uh, investigating your notes, but you, hey, it's your money. You can just say, invest in all the notes. I don't care. Or you can pick and choose which ones you like the most, depending on how much uh, research you've actually done. So it's up to you and in how much you actually want to uh, be passive or active in this investment. Again, it's up to you. So here's the thing. It's all about diversification and ground floor gives you that ability. For me, I will be exiting ground floor. If you are familiar with the channel, you can check some of my other videos or the main video on my uh, profile page and you're familiar with that, I, you, I'm, I'm using a three-pronged approach to financial freedom, and right now, ground floor doesn't really align with that approach. In the future, maybe I will get back into ground floor when I have reached my goal and I want to start to diversify across different assets. So maybe I'll get back into it. But right now, I'll be exiting it because it doesn't uh, go in track with my three-pronged approach. That's simple. This doesn't mean that ground floor isn't a great platform to incorporate into your own strategies. You're not on my three-pronged approach. My three-pronged approach is specifically for me. Now, you can use it for your own devices or your own ideas to incorporate into your own strategy, but for me, my three-pronged approach doesn't include it. So I recommend you either check out my other videos on ground floor. There's a playlist on the channel. I've said it before at the beginning of the video. And also check out ground floor's website for yourself. You'll be able to learn a lot of stuff. You can also just go to the ground floor Facebook page, join it, and just kind of watch it for a while, watch it for a month or two, see what's going on, see how the investors are in it, because it's a very active group. Investors are always commenting, always bringing up different things. And so you can see how it actually is going for yourself firsthand without putting any money into it first. That's all, folks. That wraps up my final video on ground floor. This will be the culmination of everything put at the end of the playlist on my channel. If you have any questions about the platform, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll try and get you to the place where you can get an answer. Again, if you're interested in signing up for the platform, check out the pinned comment. You can get 10 free bucks if you deposit money on the platform and start investing. Free money. If you don't use it or you don't use someone else's affiliate link, you won't get any money when you sign up. So, hey, 10 free dollars is good for you. I get a small uh, cut too. I get 10 bucks. But, hey, that's, that's how affiliate links work, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, gals and gals, I'll see you out there. Again, let me know if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section, and let's go make some money. Let's go reach our financial, financial goals. Let's hit it.